honest, if the inside of the cupboard's tidy. <laughs> quite a clear, concise little bit, and I was just interrupted, haven't I? I mean, we were going quite fast, I'm slowing myself down. Right, anyway, let's see it, let's do it. I hope people are not leaning inside. But it did fit in the opening. It did. It did fit in the opening, I know it did, because I've got video evidence. Right, good morning. It's Monday morning. My name's Matt. Welcome back. Um, if you are new here, if you go look at last week's video, you'll see that, um, and I did pick up quite a few new subscribers at the weekend, so firstly, thank you very much, actually. But if you go watch last week's video, you'll see that I was making these. I managed to get one draw in at the end of the week. Um, I've made all the other drawers. They're all on the bench. They're all here. So what I'll probably do today is I'll film me just assembling one of those drawers, put that in, and I've got another little project for the same customer I'm going to start making. Um, I'm probably going to save all my spraying up for the end of the week. But basically, um, yeah, this next project that I'm going to start doing for them is some bedside tables that they confirmed over the weekend. Um, we're going to put oak tops on these. We're going to do a similar or the same style as, as the bedroom furniture, obviously, because it'll go in the same room. And if you go and look at this video, you'll see that I've actually worked in this customer's house quite a bit. And we've now we seem to have sort of come up with like a bit of a a bit of a, like a continuity between the rooms. So the staircase has got a very similar design with the stop chamfer, the light paintwork and the oak tops, which is what I've refurbed for them. And actually that is then gonna go straight through to the bedroom on this. So we're sort of like, we're, we're, we're there now with a design on it. Um, so yeah, it should look quite good. Um, well, it will look quite good. That's, that's the goal, isn't it? Make stuff look good. Um, yeah, and uh, oh yeah, and while I'm, while I'm here in front of this wall talking, I had so many messages. So thanks so much to anyone that messaged me. They've given me so many ideas for this wall. Um, or just they've made me think about it as well. You know, even if I didn't take the ideas directly on board, it's made me rethink even just simple little things. Like one person messaged that they watched me while they were working. And I was like, why don't I just put up there a monitor with a HDMI cable in that then I can link to the laptop when I get it out um yeah it doesn't even have to be because i do i've got the office up there which has got a desk and you know i've got my microwave coffee machine now as well I've got, I'm, I'm sort of set up there but i don't always want to go and sit up in the office well, i do actually that's the problem i always want to because i've got a very nice chair up there but basically yeah if i'm just working away i can get the laptop out and i can get measurements out bring them up on the screen and um yeah it might work quite well and i, I actually think i've got the, the second hand like a bigger monitor for it anyway but um Oh yeah, and while I've got this open, uh, so this is, you know, this is what I'm using at the moment. I'm just using SketchUp. I actually just use the free version, I'm not going to lie. Um, and what I do is I'll put on the screen, how I sort of offer that as a bit of a package. Um, so I think it looks quite sharp, really. So obviously your customer, will, they'll tend to get um, four or five different views of, of the project or different examples. But then at the same time, what I'm doing is I'll give them one central view, whether it's from the top, left-hand side, you know, the middle, just of the overall of the project with my like, sort of business name, mobile number, and then a brief sort of specification. It is only brief. No prices on there, but just a brief specification of what they're getting. Now, that does a couple of things. That, number one, it looks quite sharp, quite professional. It means that everything is on one page for the customer. And I'm going to start printing these out as well. I think that will just, you know, it's nice to hold it, isn't it? Um, and it also means that if I ever have got like a really brief, quick question, because sometimes you'll know what it's like, you think, oh my God, what did I say what I was making this out of? Um, I can just nip on there. What did I say if it was soft clothes? And all my stuff is anyway. But just little things, you know, did I mention it was on butt hinges? Because I might put stuff on butt hinges every now and then. Um, yeah. And just I can just refer back to that. I think, yeah, so that's on, that's been on the screen. Have a little look at that. And then if I take one of those jobs and then I'll show you um, the finish of it as well and just think it, how that helps the customer visualise what they're getting as well. Um, yeah, I think it works quite well. Right, anyway, so I'm going to jump on with this. As I say, anyone that's commented, thank you very much. I'll probably do some sort of like shout out for the comments as I go during the week because I might get some more and I haven't really fully decided yet. Um, but one person said something that really got my brain going. And that was to, when I put the final bit of timber up there, I might do a temporary version now, I'm going to buy some Ikea curtain track, the aluminium curtain track, because it's ever so cheap. 
and I've got some GoPros at home. I'm going to make some mounts that go into these curtain tracks. And I'm also going to put, I'm going to put them in different places. Um, and then they go onto my GoPro mounts and I've just got a filming solution for the workshop. Um, cause at the moment, oh, should I will show you the filming solution? Yeah, you've seen it probably before, I know, but if you're new to the channel, you'd absolutely love this. That's it really. That's it. This just relies on its own friction. You know, and this does unclip out of there. And then, as you can see, I've just screwed that through the back. And then all these, you know, what you might think is just an absolute mismatch and load of cock up of holes. They're actually purposely designed to screw into things like so that if I'm doing, if I'm working on the fitness of planer, boom. But I'll just leave the screw in there as well. Same as above the um, panel saw. This is like really behind the scenes now yeah so and you'll notice that there behind the panel saw there's two one mil shims and some gaffer tape now they just offer different angle choices and security so think of that what you will um right uh, there's loads more dotted around the workshop sometimes sometimes i don't yeah i could get there there and uh oh here's one that is one for the spindle model this one's good look this one's good now, if you were going to pick a point in the workshop to offer something sharp and at head height, don't do it above the spindle holder. The amount of times I've caught my head on that. And the last thing, when you're pissing around with things like this, when you're messing around with things like this, I'm not going to stop swearing. Um, yeah, you don't really want to be catching the corner of your head on a screw, do you? Well, at least it's the... The last thing you want to happen, um, well, other than that, and losing a finger, um, or a blade coming off and catching you in a cock. Um, right, okay. Um, Almost that was this guy. Oh, good morning, Tuesday morning. Uh, hopefully that video yesterday, hopefully that will turn out all right. That was sort of like a, just non-stop of me doing it. Um, but obviously I'll speed it up so it's not too, uh, it doesn't make the video too long. Uh, what else did I do yesterday? Well, I did these bedside tables. Um, yeah, they're ever such a straightforward build. Like I didn't film it because it's like anything I do, it is pocket screws and domino basically. Um, I am looking at changing that system, but at the moment for cost, it works well. Um, and it's strong and it's, when it's glued, it, it's a great system really. So we've used 15 mil for all of the carcass material and that's purely just to keep the weight down. Um, and they're so small, it's strong enough. And then they're laminated to these 22 mil pieces. Um, and if you see, they're sort of like, they're mitered around the corner, all glued, four, uh, four mil dominoes in there anyway, five mils into there, all glued, screwed together. And then I just threw some extra pocket screws in there just to hold these back to the um, hold these back to the carcass. Um, I've got to put a back on them. I've got to cut the draw fronts and put the drawers in. Um, so what else did I do? Oh, I've done these draw fronts. I think they, I think they look lovely. So they're kind of they're matched basically. They're, well, they're definitely matched. They cut out one board. I made sure they're absolutely bob on. Um, yeah, I've left it a little bit heavier on the top because we're going to have that light. And as I was doing the gaps, I was like, I, want, I don't want them to be too much more than six mil. I mean, the, the other thing I could do is obviously you could have cut them down a bit more, I suppose, but I think it looks all right. Um, yeah. And then obviously yeah, they're pushed to open. They open at a decent, they really, don't they? I mean, they're, they're deep enough. They're, they're, I'll class them as full extension. It's gone mad, isn't it? It's gone absolutely bloody mad. Um, everyone I'm dealing with just wants extra work and I, um, I'm struggling. I'm just, I don't like struggling. Anyway, um, I've done nothing today, just respond to people. Um, anyway, sorry if you're a customer and you're watching this. I'm really, really sorry. If you're a customer and you're watching this, so, yeah, you're not, you're not watching this if you're a customer, are you? I hope not, anyway. Right, I'm going to do a quick little video. I've cut everything. 
you know, it didn't take long, obviously. These are going to be my, so it's just like the other day, or the last week with these rails and styles, these mock-ups. I've done them a little bit oversized and I'll re-trim them and edge band them with the preparation tape when they've dried. I mentioned this, it was these ones, I'll show you now. This is quick, 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 quick. The pins, I put the pins in. Use these 15 mil brads on the, tw on, the on the 18 gauge gun. That is purely because I just couldn't find a way. Of, I don't know how I was supposed to get all these secure because it's not often I I do this system. What I'm going to do is I'm going to film me putting these drawers together. Um, these drawer fronts. I'm not going to pin them. I'm going to glue and clamp them. They're only small, so it's an easy one to experiment with or mess around with or whatever. Film document. Um, I'm going to do that and then if you wouldn't mind just saying I would have done it like this or I would have done it like that and just let me know how you would do it. Um, yeah, I'll make a bit of a video, innit? Uh, right, cool. Let's do it. Don't suggest using Mitre Mate, please, because I'm not. I'm not going to use Mitre Mate ever for doing this. Every now and then I will use Mitre Mate as well as PVA to hold something in place, but yeah or actually you know what maybe do suggest smart mate but tell me where i can get it at a good price it works well um maybe it's, what is my mate a good idea i don't know um it's quite a clear concise little bit and i was just interrupted haven't i i mean we were going quite fast i've slowed myself down right anyway let's see it let's do it honest um believe it or not i've actually done it before done it quite a bit before um it's just not a regular thing for me to do that's that's the thing um but basically um i'm not making excuses but i sort of treated that as like a dummy run as if you were to mass produce it rather than me figuring out how to glue and clamp it two bits of wood together because i know how to do that um <laughs> believe it or not uh but yeah because there's a guy actually on instagram that all this stuff all these long wardrobe doors like these and he, and he churns through the work and his work's very good as well his, his work's got some like really like next level stuff but all of the backs of his doors are flat i've noticed so i know that he's losing clamps them on i'll just be interested to know how he does it maybe they use contact adhesive um i just would have thought it would have been pva um well you can get 10 minute pvas and stuff I think stuff i'm using 20 25 minutes uh yeah i don't know i'll be interested if anyone does that all the time they've got a really good way of doing it because i am toying with the idea of making all my drawer fronts like that because it is very handy to have a completely flat back for when you fix it to the um drawer box and also there's instances where i don't want to include that i want that to I want the drawer front to just be that i've done that a few jobs and you rebate um you rebate the back of this you rebate that down there i'm not explaining it very well to take the inside of the drawer bottom of the drawer and then just domino this to here um i've done it a couple of times it's a little bit extra work but it does save weight on the drawer and it looks quite nice 
but it's a pain because you've got to make sure that your margins are right you don't want the draw half coming in around the style so if the back's completely flat it gives you a, a big advantage if that makes sense um so yeah if you do this a lot we use gluing and clamping that if there's a different glue you use or i mean i know i could figure it out you know like i said believe it or not i know how to glue two bits of wood together um although it might not look like it during that all right so what i do like about it though is um that it's a completely flat back which you can use to your advantage like on draw fronts what i don't like about it apart from the mess i made of it is thinking about it and i did it i worked it out afterwards you've got a preparation tape the edge because you, otherwise you'll see the two seams like, like over here which i will preparation tape because i haven't got around to doing it you'll see these two seams which you know if you're decorating two seams out you're a fucking amateur um they need taping basically and then when you tape him problem with taping is Again, it's only a minor thing, but the issue with this is like you 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 can't get it exactly right when you you can't get it exactly right when you clamp it. So you have to then retrim it on the panel saw. You do get a perfectly square door, which is great, but you've obviously got to make sure that your maths is right all the way around because you don't just want to cut it all off well end. You've got to re-square it almost all the way around or just have a reference point and do three sides. But then you've got the added complication if you've got to take off the thickness of the preparation tape. So we margins work. Not a lot, it's only half a mil, but it's Obviously, that's a millimetre per door, isn't it? And again, you don't want to be on the... I mean, I don't think anyone's noticing a mil difference on the rail and style. So you probably could just take it all off one side. But if you made a mistake and you went the wrong way, then you would notice two mil, you know, if that makes sense. Um, so I always think it's just best to start as accurate as you can. Right, so, um, yeah, let me know if there's a way of doing them. They're obviously all made. I made all the drawers, didn't film that. I won't actually put the drawer in as in, there's no need. I'll just do that when I get there. So they all, they can all get sprayed now. All right, good morning. It's Wednesday morning. Um, I'm not 100% sure what I'm going to actually sort of document today. Um, basically, I've got to, so I'm just, re, I'm just trimming these doors down, which you know, you know about for those wardrobes. They're going to get um, lipped, uh, edge banded if you like, um, with the preparation tape. Um, they're going to get hills, uh, hinges drilled, stacked to one side. Then that room, apart from me just doing a little bit of work on the face for it, oh no, I've done that. Yeah, that room then's done. I've just got to paint it. Now, I've been waiting for this new paint system. I'm using uh, a new company and they're going to supply everything for me. Uh, Crosslinker, like hardener, the prime of the lot. So I've been waiting for all that to get um, sort of agreed, really. You've got to open up an account and stuff. Anyway. And because of that, I've been holding off doing the spraying on these doors from a few weeks ago. So I've just brought them back down from the spray room, just denibbed them, made sure, just, you know, thinks all as it should be. And I take them back upstairs today, give them their final, their top coats, which I'll probably be doing over the next couple of days. Um, because also tomorrow I'm out the workshop as well, not for most of the day. I don't know if I can film that. So I just sort of thought, well, what can I do really? Um, I might not include it, I, I don't know, but... So in between doing that, I'm going to start the next set of wardrobes, which I'll put on the screen now. I just thought I might do like a little video of how I, because some people have asked about, you know, how I, how, how I use the drawing program. So I might just do a little video of what the customer gets and how I include that really, um, how, how I work that out. Because the reality is you give the customer a drawing and then the drawing might change a few times. So your drawing you give them, as much as I try and make it a working drawing, not always you sometimes you know you're going to be changing stuff so you don't fully commit to the working mechanisms and i'll kind of redraw it for production not massively and not always just if, if there's moving parts like drawers and integrated bits i probably will redraw it just to make sure everything's right so i'm probably just going to do that i think right okay i'm going to try and be as uh, sort of clear and concise as i can be but uh without going into too much detail so it's not too long but basically, this is what I'll produce as soon as I've been to a customer's house. I'll, I'll get home and I'll draw the room as I've sort of documented it. So that includes skirting boards, walls, windows, beams, floor. Um, if I'm, I, I do go into more detail if there's radiators and other windows that sort of interfere with the project. Sometimes I'll just document them anyway just to make the pictures look better. But essentially, I draw that and I save that, and then I'll leave that. I won't touch that until I get a chance to sort of price the job. Um, and then when I do start doing the design process, I'll draw 
my first take on it based on the brief. So in this instance, my first take is this. So I actually introduced the lights here as well. Um, I've got um, all the doors. Everything again is its own group, every bit of the cabinet, um, etc. And then I'll have layers built into that. This is all free. This is all before they get a cost, actually. This is just part of the, the, the initial package. And then part of that is I can then show the customer what it looks like with the doors open. Um, if you see on this one, that's just like a basic. This is with the doors open. There's no details inside the wardrobes because this was the first thing they received. They saw that it was veneer drawers. Um, she then came back to me and said, I actually like this shelving arrangement. I'd like this over here. So again, I'm sort of grateful that I didn't go into too much detail. I then do a second drawing, which is here, which is basically that really. Um, again, I keep it all on one file as well, rather than having multiple windows open it's all within one document i find that a lot easier so again because by this point we then discussed she wanted the shelves it's easy for me to replicate because i've already got them drawn and they're their own groups or layers so i can just move them over i then um so it's very easy in this instance i just copied and pasted all this and put it where there was a door um and then i can then actually show her what it's going to be like with it open because i've spoken to her and they discussed how they'd like the rail configuration and the shoe rack etc so I can show you a little bit more detail. Um, and from that point, we get the price agreed. And then I can do what's, what is a construction drawing, essentially. Now, you could look at this drawing here and you could take the tape measure tool, which is that one, yes. And you can measure a door and it's 401. But I couldn't make a door at 401 because there's so many moving parts. There's obviously drawers here, um, rebates for the lights on the shelves. We've got, um, if I remove that, door we've got what would be is that going to be a half overlay a full overlay or an inset face frame for the hinges so the um best way i'll cover that is i basically physically sort of take a measurement there for how big those cupboards are and that's two two three oh um and then what i'll do is that's just another drawing um which i gave a separate viewpoint i'll just ignore that i'll I do everything by typing. I don't actually try and, if you look down at the bottom right, you'll see the numbers. I don't try and get those right. I just find that's too much work. So I'll just get the orientation right, which is that way. I'm on the right axis, I'm on the blue axis. I'll do my 2230 um, and I will do that at 600 mil deep because I, I basically I know that I'm going to build them at 600 mil deep. That is my floor plan, if you like. Again, I'll make it a group instantly. That's the floor plan of my wardrobes. Um, I know that I'm the, my first job is to have an M panel. In this case, I'm going to make the M panel six mil actually, because it's just going to be like a a glue on piece, if you like. So we're going to do six by six hundred. Um, that's gone the wrong way. So we'll same thing. The orient we'll get the orientation right. So it's actually six hundred by six. Um, and then I know that the height of these wardrobes, without going back to the drawing, I just know what they are, is 2174, not 4. Make that a group. Make a, make, no, not, not make a component, make a group. Right, okay. Um, what I'm actually going to do, as I go, I'm going to fill these in. Now, she's not having pink, and I'm not being super generic and giving her pink. I'm just giving you putting pink on just for the, the sheer contrast, I suppose. Um, right. So then we know that the overall of this is designed to be um, 400 mil. So I'll do a dotted line or just a, ref a guide point of 400. Again, I won't try and get it right. I'll just type it in. Then I can draw my carcass at the 400. Um, and it's, it's going to be done in two carcasses. So it's um, that's worked out at 394 because obviously we're less than six. So it's 394 by 600 there. And I know, again, from memory, that that's 720 tall. Okay. So that's going to be essentially a carcass that I'm going to build. And I'm going to build that out of 18 mil moisture resistant MDF that I'm going to spray. So I set an offset in of 18. I'm going to put a 10 mil back on. So I'll just rebate there very crudely, very quickly to 590. So it includes a 10 mil gap uh, back, sorry. Turn that into a group. 
Um, then I can actually make my top box. Now I don't need the calculator for that because I've got the tool, it's all open. We can just measure that, it's 14.54. So I can then come down here. If it lands on it, which it has done in that case, I'll do it. If not, I just literally type in 14.54. I won't try and hit the 600, I type the 600 in. We'll do the same thing with the offset because I'm making that out of 18 mil board. Um, and I'm going to make that. That is actually going to be 590 deep for the moment. I might change that though. I'm not 100% sure. Um, but for now, for construction drawing, this will do. Um, and as I discussed, we're actually going to do these that color just to make it a little bit simpler. Okay, now I know that I can do the same thing over the other side. So I could either there's lots of ways you could do it, but just the quickest way now is I will copy these two items um, and I'll just come in over here, six mil. I don't need to put the end panel in because obviously that's going to be against a wall. So I'll just come in any measurement, click it, and then I'll just type in the six. I often find it's easier to do it that way than it is to try and sort of find the six. Paste that, and then we can just make sure we select that corner and then it kind of should snap to my guide point. You could have come over here and then moved it over six, but, but you know, I'll just find it's easier to put the guide points in. Um, gives you a visual, I suppose, as well, that you're aiming for. Now I've got these two box sections either side. I can measure between them. So in this instance, we've got 1430. Um, so with that 1430, I can basically, I know that I'm going to put in um two wardrobes so there'd be two sides in each wardrobe and each wardrobe has got a 19 mil veneer board so we do four times 19 to, eat rep to, to represent each side that's 76 so we've got 1430 minus 76 equals 1354 and then if we divide that by three that gives us our true sort of center point so we've got 451.3 we'll just do 451 so we come over to 451, again, just do a guide. Um, I can then strike a box over to that 451 if, if it works. So I can find a way of getting it. If not, I'll just get the right orientation like there. And we'll do 451 by 2174. So 451 by 2174, okay. I'm going to send that back the full 600. We again we can do our offset on that, and that's 19 mil board. So it's a 19. Um, and we'll send that back 590 because I'm going to have a 10 mil back. Make that a group, and then we know what size wardrobe this is because obviously we had the point three, you see. So that finishes up at nine. Why has that gone to 214? I don't know. It's back that finishes up at 979 by 2174. We know we always knew it was going to be 2174 because the height's always the same. Send that in. Uh, just replicate the same detail with the 19 mil and the um, 590 depth. And then make that a group. And then the best thing we can do now, just to be clear, is just to make that a veneer board. Right. So that gives me essentially my carcass sort of cutting list, if you like, which is not that, you know, it's not that advanced. It's not that clever. You could probably figure that out with a calculator without even drawing it. However, it's really had a visual representation. Um, and it's not too dissimilar, apart from the colour that I'll put it on, as, as what would what if I'd have measured that. Um, but there, are, there will now be a few differences. One being was the six mil there, and we've got the six mil over this side. Now, what I now need is I now need to put um, face frames on. Now, I typically will overhang my face frames, but in this instance, I think because I'm already quite bulky on this edge and I've got a light to go in on this higher bit, I want this to overhang a little bit more on the inside. So what I'll do is I've got a six mil board and an 18 mil. I've got a, and I like to domino my face frames on. So I made this domino um, reference chart. And if, if I just go back a second, actually, the reason I'm not just going to randomly draw, say if I make my face frames at 40, let's just say I'll make them at um, 
40 by, if I angle that right, 40 by 22. So it's 22 mil moisture resistant MDF. 40 mil is, is quite often a, a decent size. Um, yeah, 40 is quite often a decent size. Sorry, that's gone. Sometimes this happens on Sketchup. It just disappears. It goes well off the page. I could just, let's just put that in there actually, because I've gone to the effort of drawing it. Um, so I've got my two points. I want to line it. Right, so you select that point there and get that to there. There we go. Um, let's see what we'll do as well. We'll actually draw it just, just for the, even though I know it's obviously going to go full height, 2174. That's our face frame drawn. Um, might as well colour it in as well, might we? Colour it in pink. I'll tell you what, I'll colour it in a different colour just for the sake of the, the reference. So we can see it's different. Um, so I've drawn that completely flush with that edge, that face frame. So, but I can't domino it into the 6mm board. So I could, I need to domino it into the 18mm. So we need to see what this overhang is. So just come inside the cupboard. Um, and if we just measure that overhang here, it's 16 mil. So I've got a 16 mil overhang of the face frame into the cover, which I'm actually I really I'm quite pleased with because it will hide the light. Um, although the light's going to be rebated, it will hide the light a little bit more. Um, now I'll come over to my face frame chart. Now I set this is from this is something I made up for the domino. I set all of my what's happened here? What have I done here? I've got a funny feeling I'm going to get rid of. Oh, I've got rid of that. I set all my dom. I set all my um, carcasses. I preset a domino in at sixty using the sixteen mil dot um, preset on the domino in from the internal face. You see a carcass inside edge. I set dominoes in, and then from that point, I can then use the dial on the inside edge of the face frame these presets these are all the built-in presets if i don't want to use a built-in preset i can just use the dial and i can use this in a calculator to work out what it would be now um what what offset it would give me so if i've set it at 16 million on the carcass and i then wanted to let's just say achieve a six mil overhang or a six yeah, i want you to achieve a 16 mil overhang which you can't do here that there isn't a 16 mil on here I could either use the calculator and work it out, or I know that on the other side, I've actually got a six mil overhang, don't haven't I? So because I've got a six mil overhang, let's come back to the chart. 16 on the carcass edge. Can I achieve a six mil overhang? Yes, I can by using the 28 mil preset. So I'll use the 28 mil preset off the inside edge of the face frame. I'll use the 16 mil preset on the carcass, and that will automatically offset this face frame um, six mil over now i use that for instances i'm not actually going to go through now and show you the rest of the, the bit of the, how i do the build but basically now imagine that i was going to put this here which i will do at some point this is going to come over let's just say for a different set of wardrobes or for this set of wardrobes i put this in here and let's just say that was overhanging x amount for the wardrobe you can buy these spaces for the blum hinges and they come in at different depths so that's 16 mil there you can but basically i've got a chart here that tells you the offset for the hinge and what and what you can buy the hinge at so where i've got a h that refers to what you can buy a hinge offset plate at so you can buy one at 18 you can buy one at nine you can buy one at six and you can buy one at three i've put two in at three because the domino gives you two points that are very close to the foot. This gives you the actual physical measurement and there's a bit of allowance within the, the, the hinges, if you like. So I've just come close with what hinge I need to buy. So what I can do, doesn't really make much sense probably. I'm probably not explaining it the best. I might even really need to do a full video on this. But basically, this is going to work. I essentially can build a set of wardrobes and decide what size my face frame is going to be and what overhang it's going to be using the drawing alone rather than physically laying it out and using presets on the domino that I just refer back to. I'll be interested to see if anyone would actually like to see a maybe if maybe I could do like a, a full on video of, of exactly how I do that and make it like 
just a, a yeah i would be interested yeah so i'll be interested to know actually because you know even me just doing that trying to do that in real time it has panned out to be you know quite a lengthy process um and I've, it means i've had to miss details out which is not meant it's sort of possibly not transferred that well but yeah if you do find that of any interest and you would like to know more about this face range chart and just how i do that maybe just drop me a comment and i'll, I'll think about doing a full video for it that might be that might be the best way of doing it i suppose Right, well, good morning. It is Thursday. Um, shout out if you remember this job. <laughs> First ever week that I filmed. I did put a link on the other day actually for it. But yeah, I'm back here. This is where the dishwasher's um, gone wrong. So they've got another second hand dishwasher. Ah, the feet are snapped. Um, I'll make it work because I'm not, I'm not coming back. I've already come back twice. Um, I just, yeah. Sometimes you'll just get certain jobs and certain customers and these are probably two of the nicest people i've ever met and they might watch this but i'm not saying it just because they're going to watch it they are genuinely some of the nicest people i've ever met but it's hard work i mean this is the, these are the sides that was the same when i was here before um i want to try and get a finished shot i try and show you in here actually it still looks all right actually yeah they're using that well i will say that um yeah they are using that well that could have had a light in there, that'd look nice, wouldn't it? It's gonna have a coffee machine in there as well, but that obviously hasn't happened. Yeah, they're using that well, you know, all credit to them. Um that is nice and oh, ironically the inside of the cupboard's tidy. Um anyway, uh I noticed this. I'll cut the redraw look. And you open and shut it, it bands on that. That's just sitting here, this little table with this little gizmo on. Um, yeah. What can you say about that? What can you say about that? And I've noticed that they've moved these in. I put these inserts in, what I do on all my things, and they've moved them. Just just like, set it back. Anyway, it doesn't hit it every time, does it? Yeah. Right, I'm not going to film the rest of the day because this is going to be an absolute nightmare. Um, I've got to do a bit of repair work to it as well because it's gone a little bit beyond where it should have done because they've been carried on using it and they're not really one for keeping things dry, um, which is not ideal with wood. Um, so yeah, then I'm going to go back to the workshop, carry on. I've got a few ideas this week for doing bits and bobs on my videos, so I don't know whether that's going to be included or whether I'll just film me working. I know this is probably not the most seamless video and none of them are actually because i never know really know what i'm doing till the end of the week and i upload all my footage um in which case i might have deleted this i'm just talking to myself but that's all really i'm, I'm doing it for is just talking to myself right shouldn't we be walking around the mouth showing you stuff okay right so yeah one more pan round of the it is great though it is i love it i do love it but i just couldn't live like it right <sighs> i finished looks good though still look nice finish still yeah, you get right under them lights. That looks nice. So this was actually sprayed with the first job I did with the Graco Airless. What have they done there? What has happened there? They've leveled that fridge so much it doesn't fit in the opening. What, how do people not ring me and say? But it did fit in the opening. It did. It did fit in the opening. I know it did because I've got video evidence. What is going on? Maybe they've got a new fridge. Ah, oh, I bet they've changed their fridge. Probably because the old one broke. Right, I'm just talking now, I've got to work. Right, yeah, back in the workshop now. Um, I weren't too bad. I'm fairly confident I'm going to include it, but basically I just went and done that uh, dishwasher door, which I mentioned from last week or the week before, the one where the, yeah, where, well, watch that video, it's 
ridiculous what's happened but anyway uh while i was there um i actually adjusted some of the door fronts because sometimes they move a little bit especially the double doors if they're not 100 percent perfect it's quite noticeable they're only on the euro hinges they just a quick you know, cabinet hinge obviously quick to adjust and also i noticed t- two of the doors I hadn't got the magnet catches on oh I must have had a moment there when i put them on but um anyway uh and also i got given this coffee machine how cool is that um and i've got the same one at home so i know it's a good machine that's going to go up in the office uh which i'm not going to show you up in the office because the office is um i'll put it this way it's getting to this point where because it's a tool store down down that wall in the office it's a tool store and now i've got my bench around there with the microwave and sandwich toaster kettle now there'll be a coffee machine there it's getting to the point where i'm going up there and i'm just putting my stuff down at the top of the stairs rather than going and putting it where it should go and i'm now having to climb over that stuff it's not that bad um it's not, it's not yeah it's not it's not that bad but it is bad it's getting bad um before i um before i went last night oh i put that sign up didn't i i uh i spray lacquered all this um so actually in last in the comments of last week's video people mentioned about putting the curtain across here and i mentioned it this week um i'm definitely going to do it i just want to find a really good system to do i don't want to do just a bit of tarp i want a really nice curtain that's very easy to put away and i think i'm going to do it so that it just houses into like a box in there or something just something nice because if it don't house it away it'll just get caked in dust and when i bring it out um although i am quite good for dust in here to be fair i do keep the place pretty clean these air filtrations they really help two of those i keep them low level as well i think that really really helps so yesterday all i did was i just I do, i've done it a few times hence why there's all these spray mounts on the benches every now and then i'll just run out of room in the spray room or i just i don't want to go up there and disturb what i've done so i just like run a few bits out in here and all i do is because i've got because i can shut the spray room and shut the office i'll just blow all the dust out with the doors open you get the right system going on whack the air filtrations on let it settle blow it out again then before i go home put the air filtrations on the timer and spray everything before I go home and then come in the next day and it's cooked off perfect. This is what I've done with this lacquer. And actually, if you look at in these drawers, um, like that is, I've not touched this drawer yet. You know, and that is, there's not an ounce of dust in there. So it's gone really, really well. But anyway, yeah, what I was going to do was I was going to take these apart and I was going to flat pack them all, bubble wrap them, get them all ready. The painted components, they'll get painted when I've finished doing the Sapili stuff. I'm not going to paint, try and paint them both at the same time. I just want a bit more room up there, really. Um, but I'm not going to do that now because I can't be bothered. I've lost so much. By the time I take all this apart, flat pack it back away and wrap up and put all the drawers away, I'm not going to be left with... I can put everything because it goes in there anyway. So I might as well just leave them there. Because um, I'm not fully signed off on this area yet, well, I'm going to extend my bit of wall through there build a platform can't really use it how i want to use it so i'm just going to stack it all in there it'll look tidy um and i'm just going to get jumping on the other wardrobes and worst case scenario i won't assemble the other wardrobes um well i will i won't i won't do the dry run of them where i'll put all the trims on because i know i can just do that on site um not a lot's going to go wrong uh or i'll just build them there it doesn't really matter um it would be nice to use it how i intended to use it but you know such is life um right so i'm gonna jump on that now I probably won't do much of me film i just want to really get a good view because i've lost the morning which is certain customers don't really appreciate you know the fact that i'm I'm doing these wardrobes but at the same time i've got to maintain other parts of my business like doing a bit of spraying or um which i will nip off i'll do which is what i do like about this paint room it really does work well so what i've done today as soon as i've walked into this workshop i've nipped up there just before so as soon as i came in before i opened the doors i nipped up there i just whacked one quick coat on the front of the doors and then i've opened all the doors up speaking to you and then by the time i get all this packed away like an hour on it and get my cut list out i'll be able to nip up there and put another coat on i'll be able to come back down and shut the door the extractors on a timer up there as well or i've got or i can plug it into the other socket where i've got a remote so i can just turn it on and off while i'm in and out of the room so i can even leave it on just in case a bit of overspray set also i can take that out of the room it works really really well um the only thing is like I, what i do miss about outsourcing my spraying and i will still outsource it from time to time um although i'm taking on more and more of it what i do miss about it is the fact that it's just another job done what i don't miss about it is the fact that you've got to get everything ready in one go and you've actually still got to go 
like like that job would be perfect looking at it now in the in the window in the doorway sorry that job there would be perfect because i could bring up the guide as we spray in so i'm going to drop this off and uh, it'd take care of it great what happens if i wake up tomorrow morning and i go oh i need another bit for this and that tends to happen um i think it happens to everyone if it doesn't it just happens to me and fuck it i'm no good but um yeah so if i'm doing the spraying i can sort of take care of that and also you lose time taking it there and picking it up anyway and then it's more transit more damage um which is just like more more potential for damage so i'm handling it in-house um yeah uh what i'm gonna do then i am not going to film doing what i'm doing sorry but i've done no end of talking and filming this week um and we'll yeah pick you up tomorrow really pick you up tomorrow with a little bit of something um i've just got just had a bit of a shit week really where basically i've had to look at so many jobs talk to so many customers and i've still got people chasing me now i've got to go see people tomorrow as well um yeah like this happens every year i get so far through the year doing really really well and then it just creeps up on you and then people start getting a bit anxious because christmas is coming and uh before you know it and then they're not your shorter days um and sometimes you know stupid things like starting a youtube channel and spending all your time talking to the camera as well right speak to you in a bit it will halt to proceedings oh, i've just found something out which is game changing um most of the people that uh, watch my videos you do uh, i know do woodworking so if you own the domino you probably knew this and i feel like an idiot for not knowing this but basically your domino has got these um reference paddles which are 37 mil to the center of the cut you're really supposed to do one tight that's a tight domino and one loose and the idea being that when you put a domino in there you've got room to set it that really applies for things when you've got series of dominoes when you've got like a tabletop blew up you can probably do all one side tight and the other side loose because you want that lateral movement for for lining things up because you, your reference for for height will stay the same but you just want to be able to wiggle it left and right same if you were doing a, a wardrobe you wouldn't really want every domino in exactly the right place because it'd just be if, if one was half a mil out it wouldn't go together so you have one that's slightly loose and one that's tight but it's always bugged me because i've seen these videos and i've read it in the book somewhere that you set your first domino in using the reference paddle so on one board so if it was a door say you'd set it in 37 mil then you'd set that one in 37 mil and when they meet they're perfect and then the others can be loose because you, th that's your tolerance really there but these two are your setting ones they're absolutely perfect they're both tight i've never been able to do that with my domino I've, I've worked out after i brought it that this if you see this plate here you have to calibrate that by undoing them two torx 10 screws and move it over to get it central get it central to the base plate there's a center mark on the base plate and there's a center mark on the fence i'd work that out but it always bugged me that the paddles were just a hair out you know literally half a millimeter if that but that doubles because you do one on the left that's half a millimeter out and one on the right that's half a millimeter out um because you're butting up if i'm butting up on that side and i'm putting the domino in i'm butting up on the right and then that one that, that meets it i'm butting up on the left hand side of it to make it meet so you, that's the way it works um yeah basically uh it always really really bugs me that if you're a hair out you essentially that adds up to almost like a you know half a mil out adds up to a mil out because it's double the error well i noticed when i bought the domino that you get spare paddles um and i always thought well i, I guess over time if because they're plastic if you do more right cuts than you do left cuts one would wear so they're just a replaceable paddle well i found this website and i'll put it on the screen now and essentially it's telling you everything you need to know about all your festival products um and it turns out that the spare paddles that come in the box are a hair smaller so for whatever reason when you get your domino you're supposed to do your trial cuts your plun you know your first few cuts work out which one of these paddles is essentially slightly further away than the other and then replace the one that's closer with the smaller paddles that are in there so you get i don't know if you can see this if i put them on here because i've done it already 
you see there's like a very very fine difference in height it's it's minuscule so basically you just got to swap one over with the other because for whatever reason festival don't want to do it for you and they don't even really want to tell you but it, i mean i'm out of warranty with this i've got the bit of paper somewhere yeah you get this you get this that comes with it in the in the in the packet that tells you how to swap them over but it doesn't tell you why so if you're like me and you brought a domino and you were like amazed with it apart from the fact that when you were trying to get things perfectly lined up with the paddles it was out a smidgen because that's game changing for me now because i can set doors to that if I, you know if I, rather than do i don't have to do my rail and styles longer uh, my styles sorry longer than my rails when i'm making doors because i can if they're only little doors i can square them up and i can just get them perfect um yeah it's just game changing so if you like me and you didn't know that um yeah thank me in the comments basically if you did know it sorry for wasting your time but i didn't know that and i and i don't know why festival don't do it i really don't but that is a uh that is an absolute revelation like i said i've just changed mine over and got it absolutely perfect so that's just going to change how i work with it um what annoyed me was i was out of warranty and i kept thinking i mean that's how long i've had it and i still didn't still didn't know um but yeah like i was going to contact festival i keep thinking i should contact them and just go look i hate to tell you this but i think you've made a mistake with my domino and i've been on like online saying to you when we also that problem everyone's like no 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 but apparently maybe people aren't using the 37 reference uh pins as much as i am but i've always noticed it's a little bit out or maybe people just thought oh it's you know because sometimes when you sneak up on stuff when you put the domino in it can move a little bit but yeah i've tried everything apart from obviously that and um yeah that is game changing so if you didn't know that thank me in the comments well good morning it's friday morning um i am i'll be nipping in and out of the paint room today because i've just got one more coat on the shutters i'm actually going to take you up there and show you though, um something on the doors something quite interesting i'll be interested to know if anyone's done this um or if it's a good idea or a bad idea but basically these are the bases for my the uh for my units for the second set of wardrobes and i'll put the video up this week of how i'm doing that they're the sides it was quite interesting really to see see them on the bench and i didn't film it so i might as well just go through it now i think me sliding them off the rack onto the panel saw onto here backwards and forwards over here dominoing and whatever else i've done um that really was about two hours work i think it's pretty good to be fair and that's all really because of the you know optimization of the cut list um and actually i probably could have done it a little bit quicker but i did stop and i tweaked a few things which again was purely you know the, the benefits again of having that cut list because it, it made me think about it um and visualize it before i'd done it so yeah just another advantage really what i'll do is i'll pick you up at the end of the day with some of those um uh assemble because i've actually um i've actually because i've been able to visualize it and now they're all cut i'm going to change i'm always changing stuff i'm going to change one of them a little bit i've got an interesting idea you know now i've done that that's sitting like that that's a shadow um yeah i've got an interesting idea um where where i'm doing this little plimp thing on the bottom where that just clips on i mean really that needs the lamello for stuff like that but maybe i'll get it i don't know i do like this fitted furniture sort of stuff but yeah basically um oh, i can't sort them units out as well God, i can't leave them on level it's too long but anyway yeah um because i've got that i'm going to do a similar thing but not a clip on thing i was going to just clip it on for these other units not for the bottom i'll do the bottom the same I'm not really making much sense i know but the middle section like a shelf section i've got an idea why i'm doing it I think it'll look pretty good but i'm gonna get my measurements right so i'm gonna do that today i won't film me doing it i'll just film the end process and i'll probably be able to explain it a little bit better um right i've just uh got to just go away from that door and i'm gonna put you up in the paint room in a second i've just got to back my phone on charge i'm just gonna show you um show you something right i don't know what's going on but every time i try and focus on this it doesn't focus i'm gonna give it a go but this is basically yeah that's stayed in i think this is basically the sapelia that i've sprayed for them shutters for them for the doors i made a couple of weeks ago look at the i think the finish is lovely i'm just wondering about that for a cabinet door wondering if anyone's just trying 
I don't get any I wonder if anyone's actually sprayed cabinet doors, kitchen cabinet doors like that. Don't know. I'll be interested to hear if you have, because I mean the price I pay for the Sapili, it's more than what paying for the tulip, but a lot less than paying for maple and things and Although I like the tulip, I love the finish on tulip. It's not the hardest hardwood, obviously. It's, it's, you know, it's not really. A, well, it is a hardwood, but but the sapili. Um, the only problem with sapili is it's like tannins. But I don't mind paying a bit more for you know, like all coat primers and stuff and sealing it or just whatever. But it's a good wood because it's like not free as the tulip is. Um, yeah, quite a clear. And it paint. It, oh, it's a lovely effect on it when it's painted. So. To do any cabinets out of Sapili, I'd be really, really interested to hear because I'm toying with the idea of maybe just doing my kitchens in it. Um, and it then means I've just got stock of oak and Sapili, which I'm more likely to use because Sapili I'll use for externals. That was it.